this year, ladies and gentlemen, the government that I lead will celebrate the first official public holiday to remember and pay our respect and acknowledge the great contribution that the Pagirmitiers have performed, have sacrificed, have given to this uh, small island of Fiji. The arrival of indentured laborers from India in the second half of the 1800s had a lasting influence on Fiji. According to historical records, Fiji's seaports and island anchorages bustled with activities and movements between 1879 and 1916. That was because some 42 ships made 87 accumulated trips here, carrying Indian indentured laborers from the Indian subcontinent. <laughs> The Fiji Times revisited the villages of Vanrai and Nasilai in Nakelo Tailevu on the very day the Syria ran aground Nasilai Reef some 139 years ago. If you travel the gravelly part of Nakelo Road that leads to a roundabout at Nasilai village, you won't resist marveling at the long stretch of beach many picnic goers have frequent in their quest to find sea, sun and sand. This stretch of black sandy shorelines holds a few historical stories that span as far back as the early colonial days. Nasilai Beach also overlooks the boisterous Nasilai Reef, the watery grave of the ill-fated indentured ship Syria, which ran aground on the night of May 11, 1884. The shipwreck may be just a piece of history to some, but to villagers who live along the coastline adjacent to Nasilai Reef, the Syria story is something they hold close to their hearts. Van Rai village historian and elder Alfiri Tingalo is the loyal custodian of a bell that was saved from the Syria when it got shipwrecked. He had the bell stored in his suitcase for the past 48 years. <laughs> Before, before the meeting, there was a coral here, like uh, that's what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. see? See those, um, those are the boulders. Yeah. at Matanizangi Estate near Nasilai village in Nakelo, Tailevu. And right here is where 
those who lost their lives in 1884 when the ship Syria ran, um, ran aground on Nasilai Reef. So they were buried here. And according to some of the stories, um, they used uh, coral boulders like this to mark some of the graves. And uh, as you can see, it's all overgrown. Nukulau, known to many as a picnic spot in the Suva Peninsula, has an interesting history behind it, beyond the island's abundance of sea, sand, and sand. During the period of indenture session in Fiji, 1879 to 1916, the island received thousands of Indian laborers brought in by British colonial rulers to work in Fiji's commercial plantation. So the first boat, Leo Lilas, when it came uh, into our waters on 14th, it entered 14th May uh, 1879. Uh, what happened was it was full of disease uh, and that the governor, acting governor at that time wanted to turn the boat away. So instead, it was offloaded on 25th of May on Yenodai Lailai in Nyalibuka. From the second boat onwards till the end, about 40 voyages came to this island. And more than 60,000 of our ancestors landed here first and were quarantined here. Uh, for four to six weeks before they were allocated to their plantations. But also, um, those who couldn't make it are buried on this island. Uh, if you've had the time to walk around the <coughs> island, you'll see the different slabs. Uh, the staff, when they came here, Ministry of Lands, very excitedly told me, we found tamarind trees. That means they were here. They're very, very old tamarind trees. And we also saw many other plants that we are familiar with from India growing around here. History is important. It teaches us plenty of things. And it is our role, people who are living out this, at this time of year. And what we learn from history. Going forward, I'm thankful that the government has recognized this day. We will learn for it, from it and improve our relationship together with the descendants of the Indians and the everyone that has come to the home. I, on behalf of the Indian people, will say that this day has been a long time waiting. And to be here on the little flag. Commemorate people that did serve quarantine here. I believe all of us, not too long ago, probably two and a half years ago, we got to know what quarantine was all about. Speaking from personal experience, someone has gone through quarantine during COVID times. It's not a good feeling, it's not a good space to be in. I can only imagine. Five days the amount of history uh, into the event and many of us are learning new things like when I saw the steamer I went back and talked about it I mean we thought quarantine but you don't think the details of what quarantine might have been like until you see certain things so it's been a huge learning for me and I hope it's a huge learning for the nation and as we learn and remember the past hopefully we are reliving some of the stories and acknowledge the pain of our ancestors and hopefully that helps us move forward because many a times we are very much caught in the past. Mm -hmm.
and uh, I think it's a great opportunity to learn and heal. A day before the first official Girmit Day public holiday, history unfolded live at the Vodafone Arena at Lothala Bay in Suva when the Methodist Church of Fiji and Rotuma and descendants of the Girmitia exchanged apologies and forgiveness in a solemn church service on Sunday. An emotional Prime Minister Sitiveni Rambuka fought back tears as he sought forgiveness for the hurt and pain inflicted on Fijians of Indian origin during the colonial era and the political upheavals of 1987 and 2000. I'm not making this confession as Prime Minister of Fiji. As I do not hold the government accountable for my actions of 1987. I do not claim to be making this confession on behalf of the Vanua Navatu. I'm not to Navatu. I'm just a member of the Ebusa Navatu, Vanua Navatu, of the Conrovia. But I make this confession on my own behalf and on behalf of all those that took part with me in the military coup of the 14th of May, 1987. We confess our wrongdoings. We confess that we have hurt so many of our people in Fiji, particularly those of the Indo-Fijian community of the time, and among them, sons and daughters, grandsons and granddaughters of those that were indentured or indented as laborers from India between 1879 and 1916. We confess that we have wronged you. We confess that many eventually left our shores. Those of you that remain and slog on with us and have brought some restoration in our relationships over the far past few years. I thank you. I thank the community leaders who have worked tirelessly to bring the two communities of indigenous Fijians and Indo-Fijians together. The work is not complete. We will have to continue. I do, not make this, I do not make this as an excuse, but I wish those before us had done this in the years gone by. Long before 1987, long before 1970, I admit our wrongdoings. You are correct to have blamed us. You have every right to blame us for the difficulties you went through. We do not blame you for being angry with us or even hating us. You're justified in your anger and your hate. I stand here to confess and to 
ask for your forgiveness. The overcast skies over the capital city failed to deter the spirits of hundreds of Fijians who marched through the streets of Suva as part of the Girmit Day celebrations on Monday. Led by the Fiji Police Band, the Girmit Day March saw various groups from all around the country display attire, artifacts and remnants of the Girmit era. The procession started from the Suva flea market and made its way to Albert Park where Prime Minister Sitiven Rambuka and guest of honor Indian Minister of State of External Affairs Dr. Rajkumar Ranjan Singh greeted the crowd. Many Fijians lined the streets with their Fiji and Indian flags to show their appreciation for the efforts of the Girmit year. Ladies and gentlemen, the Girmit commemoration will be remembered for its vibrancy, color and inclusivity. Amongst the various events organized to mark the rich tradition, heritage, culture, and history of the Girmitia was the reconciliation service organized by the Methodist Church of Fiji and Rotuma yesterday afternoon. Yesterday was an historic day of genuine display of love, righteousness, where one community sought forgiveness from the other. It marked another chapter of, of our meeting of hearts between descendants of the Girmitia and our Itoke community, as well as all other races in Fiji. In that era of sending workers away, a total 1.16 million Indians were sent abroad to work under the agreements in Fiji, we call them under the Girmitia system to come and work here. We pay our respects to them and their descendants who are here with us. And this week we've been having a conference and attending the conference will be representatives from various countries to which Girmitiers, or subjects of agreement, workers from India were sent. They were sent to British Mauritius, 453,000. British Guyana, 238,000. British Trinidad and Tobago, 147,000. British Jamaica, 36,000. British Malaya, 400,000. British Grenada, 3,200. British St. Lucia, 4,350. Natal, 152,000. 100, St. Crit, Crits, 315. All a very long list. And British Fiji, 60,965. And the list goes on. East Africa, 32,000. Seychelles, 6,315. British Singapore, 3,200. Danish West Indies, 321. A total 1,601,935. And at last count in January this year, they totaled 32 million around the world. Counting global people of Indian origin and non-resident Indians. That's how significant our celebration in Fiji is. And I thank my colleagues in government. I thank those that have been thinking about it over the years. 
that has now come to pass. Thank you. 